የሐሪ ሚዲያ ኔትወርክ ቤት ሰዎችና ወዳጆች የከበረ ሰላምታችን በእያላችሁ በትይድረሳችሁ ለዛሬም ከዚህም ከዛም ፕሮግራማችን ኖቬምበር 11 2019 በሶስት ሰዓታት ላይ ሀብታ ሙያ ላይ ያቀረበው መስረተ ቤት ሱሬ የተለያዩ ምላሾችን የተሰጡት ማቅረባችን ይታወሳል ለዛሬው በእንግሊዘኛ ከዶክተር ኢምራን ካሚል የተጻፈውን በሰሚር አህመድ ይቀርብልናልና በጥሞና እንድትከታተሉ እንጋብዛችኋለን In the name of Allah most gracious most merciful I greet you all with greetings of paradise assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh may peace and blessing be upon you a prejudiced demena haftamu ayelus misappropriated journalism of hear it all from me take it all from me believe it believe in me i know it all and his repulsive perception of horror i infer to the presentation made on the ethio 360 media zare min al program aired through the youtube channel on the 11th of november 2019 depicting mrs jerusalem as moderator mr ermias and mr habtamu as a commentators political analysts in a formation program as the introduction was made by the moderator the topic of discussion was entirely reflecting on the unrest at waldaya university on the statement made by a vice chairman of oromo democratic party on the consequences of the unrest during the first 46 minutes on the disclosure the question that was put forward to habtamu was how do you see the unrest at waldaya university and damage to the students is it related with the current ethnic political cultural or is it as a result of football clash what do you think as a solution for such problems well how does habtamu found it befitting to bring into the discussion harar and abdullah sharif's museum while it is totally unrelated with the subject matter and if though if thought otherwise it clearly shows the speaker being clueless about relevance of point of references for the purpose of correction in a given subject matter in a sound journalistic platform a responsible media strives to impart and deliver a discourse on the subject matter responsibly enough having a correct background information be it on verbatim recorded archive history or self physical observations without favors and bias it is hoped that ethio 360 media does endeavor to uphold journalistic etiquette and dictum of do not cause harm and do not infringe on the rights of others nor be the vessel for disharmony disgruntlement and misgivings rather strive to maintain the highest standard of neutrality nevertheless while acknowledging the right of freedom of expression which is as well as premised within a context of responsibility in imparting informations in its actuality and truthfulness having heard habtamu ayelo's narration such as unwarranted vilification on the people of harar and selectively on abdullah sharif shouldn't be ignored as it is inflammatory prejudicial bias defamatory and demeaning having an ulterior motive to garner political expediency and malicious intent habtamu if you may allow me to address you so you have the you have the temerity and such ill-conceived prejudicial demeanor 
for deliberately distorting and shamelessly falsifying the historical value, the cultural heritage, the social fabric and the religious bondage of the people of Harar and the surrounding populace without a remorse which is unacceptable of an Ethiopian entity by any imagination until otherwise one is overtaken by unrealistic political fantasy of prejudice and delusional grandeur. In light of putting the historical perspectives in the correct manner, there is a need of relating few points to shed light and enlighten your distorted feelings and falsified reasoning to the correct track and imbibe in you a wisdom of sanity. For your good information, for your good information whether you like it or not, you can go mad about it. Harar, the iconic spiritual landmark of humanity that has made a mark in the heart of many had been enlisted by UNESCO as one of the wonders of the world heritage in acknowledgement and recognition of being one of the oldest iconic historical landmarks not only for Ethiopia but also regionally and for the external world that has maintained its core values and structural integrity till to date. In recognition of the beholders and trustees of this acclaimed history, their cultural value and social fabric. Indeed, for a record and certainly certainty, no history can be accounted for without acknowledging the maker of the history, their rightful existence and ownership of their historical landmark. Our great historian Abdullah Sharif, on his own capacity and passion, had been engaged in this historical journey of his lifetime much, much way before EPRDF came to power. Of course, he couldn't project and present the historical treasures and heritage in his disposable at the time of Minilik and Haile Selassie ruling. I believe you were too, inf too infantile to understand these details by then. The downfall of his feudal rules paved the way for projecting and bringing to the light the wonderful ethnic diversity of Ethiopia and its cultural heritage. In fact, his efforts has received accolades by various organizations, personalities, international and local media outlets. Do you know, at present, some of the Harari historical relics are being exhibited in the National Museum of Washington, D.C. and in Turkey, Istanbul. By the way, not so long ago, Lucy, locally known as Dinknesh, was exhibited in Washington, D.C., USA, at the same time when Abdullah Sharif was an exhibitor. Habtamu, for God's sake, and the conscience he bestowed upon us, I hope you won't say Lucy Dinknesh was representing APRDF, Wayane as you call it, or she was Harari. For people of conscience, this is a great treasure of historical heritage to be dignified and to take pride. But for the lack of Hatamu, a subject of ridicule, this is nothing but a reflection of typical delusional grandeur of the high standard. One would confidently say without no reservation, not only Harar, but Ethiopia needs the likes of Abdullah Sharif to rise up among all the community's members. Well, Habtamu, you may eat. You may eat out your heart or swallow your grandeur. A due recognition and honor has been bestowed upon the deserving ones. Nothing can be said other than this as a consolation for your futile attempt. Then, Habtamu, what would you dignify your sanity for recognition in the context of Harar and 
generally Ethiopia. The conquer of Harar by Menelik, the conquer of Harar by Menelik and the turning of Masjid into a church, a Madhanalem church in the center of Harar. The unprecedented subjugation and administrative authorization on the people of Harar and the region. Imposition of subjective and selective discrimination. Dispossession and dislocation of community members. The brutal war of Chalanko and the Inquisition post Harar conquer, so on and so forth. For reference, for the reference sake, you may see page 85 to 125 on book written by Ahmadine Jabal, the great historian of the generation, titled History of the Struggle and the Sacrifice of Ethiopian Muslims and the Rule of Minilik, Johannes and Haile Selassie. If these are the criterion that you look for a recognition, well, that might happen in your dream. Land of political delusion. As such, Minilik in the history book of Ethiopia does have a different perspective, such as the victory of Battle of Adwa, which we all are proud about. By the way, I hope you won't make again a historical blunder by saying Hararis had not contributed towards the Battle of Adwa. If you perceive it otherwise, still you are entitled, but this regard, this regard needless to say that Ras Makonnen would have wanted to rise from his grave at least to defend the Harari's immense contribution towards the Battle of Adwa, not because he likes them, but he owes it to them. Make no mistake, the victory of Adwa is victory of all Ethiopians. On the other hand, in the other part of Ethiopia, in the context of Harar and the region, by enlarged, Minilik is regarded as a conqueror. That is how history has recorded and archived it's in the record book of history and is being narrated by historians accordingly. Thus, this factual history cannot be changed or erased, no matter what your imagination tells you or how you want it to serve you. The core element issue is how to modulate one's perception of historical facts and cultivate positive thinking, thinking and apply level-headedness on understanding of historical perspective for a common purpose. You need to revamp your historical data, if any is available at your disposal, and to recap with some of the correct historical details with regard to Harar and the region by enlarge, just ask yourself simple questions such as, what is Harar? What does it mean? How Harar came about? How are how are was ruled and who where and rules? What was their guiding principle of ruling? What is the religion orientation of the people of Harar and the surrounding population? What is the historical integration of the people of Harar, Oromos, Somalis and Afar? What is the social fabric and religious belief that kept this interlinked people together for decades. What significance Harar, ha Harar have and how it is regarded and understood by external world, especially the Muslim world, like Turkey, Egypt, Somalia, Sudan, Saudi Arabia, Gulf State, Syria, Southeast Asia, whereby the mark of Harar is a physically living evidence in these countries. Had you known the above historical indicators, you would have not been rambling and grumbling around. You may refer to the great work that were done by historians of the generation, such as Professor Lapiso, historian Ibrahim Mulushawa, and Ahmadine Jabal. That is, if you are willing to attain knowledge. In fact, you had a the greatest opportunity to hear it from the horse's mouth when you went to her. Had, you, had your intent 
of attaining knowledge and historical perspectives about horror were not prejudice or your delusional demeanor and clouded by negative preconceived ideas whereby in such a state a denial takes a precedence and even a gold might have looked as a metal bar for you what a missed opportunity otherwise by now you would have been loaded by a gem of historical details suffice to say being a narrator or commentator does not merely require one somehow to be on the mic on the mic but the principle of conduct is to have an in-depth knowledge of the subject matter to talk about i hope this is not a far-fetched principle from you while acknowledging and respecting the source of your perceptional views it is high time that at this age of modern political thinking you need to liberate yourself from the clutch of prejudice historical perspectives so as to be able to modulate your perceptional outlook to understand ethiopia in the context of collective heritage of nations and nationalities in unison at this juncture it is worth mentioning that by any measure and standard just for having been physically presented in horror at one point of time in your life what ever observational assessments you made or narration you came up with does not stand to be a cons- to be accepted in totally as a true narration if not supported by evidential documentation and a reliable witness just to mention you said quotes as a translated i heard him or abdullah sharif personally disregarding the history of aksum unquote the same tone and posturing you said quote as translated abdullah sharif is being sent abroad by wayani representing ethiopia unquote how do you expect an audience to be understand this con- contradictory statements of yours in purpose the two statements does not at all come to terms unfortunately your attempt was entirely like hear it all from me talk it from me hear it, hear it all from me take it from me believe in me i know it all this is unacceptable by any standard looking at your venomous nefarious verbatim as it contravenes the rule of natural justice which implies that you cannot be the accuser and the judge at the same time as such your attempt to insinuate a hatred and spill a seed of discontent between the hararis the oromos and other ethnic members by projecting a falsified concocted story expose your lack of profundity analytical precision and ineptness big time and remains to be a futile exercise since these people are having a strong historical bondage at this injector if sanity prevails your political godfather and mentor will not come to your rescue and be part of this colossal embarrassment that you brought on yourself but rather might might choice to be distant from it until unless it touched by the the vital the vital signet of prejudice demeanor and delusional grandeur haptamu thump up for having gained more than 89000 viewers possibly more on the 11th the 11th of 2019 of zare min al program the highest since the inception of the ethio 360 media and a capital gain as a result that shall prop you like a color like a roller coaster to transform you from a video blogger status to media center 
sadly after bleeding the heart of the people and stepping on their dignity and thumb down for your moral decadence. Humanly enough, a sympathy is hereby extended for the ordeal that you have undergone while in imprisonment because of your political stand. No human being should have been subjected to such humiliation and circumstances. It is hot that you have totally recovered from the psychological trauma and the pain that has inflicted upon you. Come to think of it, you are a living evidence of what is it all about being unjustly physically imprisoned, no matter what the case be. And for sure and thoughtfully, it is hoped that you do well understand what freedom of conscience is all about. However, despite your past life experience, unfortunately, you adopted as a method of imprisoning and capturing human conscience by a barrage of falsified information, statements and verbal hypnos hypnotization, which is worse from the imprisonment, if not less than physical imprisonment. What a shame. Be it as it may contextually, your narration is irrational, inflammatory basis, prejudicial, selective, vexatious assertion, which is motivated in bad faith. If all if at all you are endowed with Ethiopian cultural value of humility and clear conscience, the noble thing for you to do is to seek a remedy for this surge of oral diarrhea that has badly scooped you low by rendering an equivocal apology to Abdullah Sharif and the people of the region. As such, the editorial board of Ethio 360 Media should look at this matter in a dignified manner without prejudice and apply corrective measures to display a journalistic dignity in light of the principles that is stands for. At this time of tumultuous political upheaval, Ethiopia needs us more than ever and it is incumbent upon us to forget unity and work toward attaining a sustainable peace, harmony, and prosperity by embracing and exercising tolerance, respect, humanity, acknowledgement of diversity as a natural God-given beauty. So long, Dr. Imran Kamil, date 12th of November 2019. ተመልካቾችን ለዛሬ ያዘጋጀላችሁ ፕሮግራም እዚህ ላይ ይደመደማል በተመሳሳይ ፕሮግራም እስከነገናኝ ጊዜ ሐሳባችሁን ምክራችሁና ግጻሳችሁን እንድትለግዙን በአክብሮት እየጋበዘን በዚህው ሀብታሙ አየለም ሐሳብ አለኝ የምትል ከሆነ ሁሉ ግዜም በራችን ክፍት ነውና ያለን ሐሳብን በነጻነት እንድታስተላልፍ እንጋብዛለን ከወዲሁ መልካም ጊዜ Man no mira yo 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 m